2009, the ConocoPhillips Integrated Sciences Building was completed, and the day the building opened up, we moved in 40 Arctic ground squirrels and started doing research. So what we have here are two chambers that are capable of maintaining temperatures as low as minus 50. Currently, what we're doing is manipulating light. We are trying to understand the basic sensitivities these animals have to a light-dark signal and to changes in light quality in captivity. And that tells us how the clock is functioning or potentially functioning in the wild across the polar day. The clock as we know it resides in the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus, a brain region that is responsible for keeping time. And we know the basics of how it functions. It's comprised of a hierarchical loop of protein synthesis and degradation. So proteins that are synthesized in one part of the day shut down their own synthesis and degrade in about 24 hours. And that's what sets the rhythm. Once the protein is degraded, the process starts again. We know that this clock is driven by protein synthesis and then decay. And we know that when animals are hibernating, their core body temperature is dropping below minus two degrees. And the protein synthesis, transcription, and translational processes are greatly inhibited by low temperature. So does the clock function in hibernation? If the clock does function in hibernation, how does it do so at low temperature? If it doesn't function during hibernation, how do animals know when to start or end hibernation? So let's say an animal initiated hibernation on September 1st. Well, it comes to high body temperature then in late March or early April. At this time, soil temperatures are constant. They're buried underground under a meter of soil and under snow. It's dark, it's continuously cold. There's no cue for them to be sensitive to. Yet these animals all come to high body temperature and emerge to the surface within a very narrow window of time. What is happening with the clock? Is it the clock that is telling them what time of year it is after they've been sequestered in their burrow for seven, eight, nine months? We are trying to figure out if the clock continues to tick, continues its rhythmic transcription and translation of clock proteins. We have animals that are hibernating and we sample those animals at various times across a bout of hibernation. And we look at the relative concentration of the protein that is there that makes up the clock to find if there is a rhythmic expression of that protein across the hibernation season. We've collected most of the tissue that we need for that, and those tissues have been sent to Michigan State University, where another collaborator, Lily Yan, operates a laboratory that will look at these tissues and quantify those clock proteins of interest. That's one thing that I think makes this project really interesting, is we span from the ecological to the neurobiological, to the molecular, trying to understand the persistence of clock function and the reason why the animals remain rhythmic when indeed they don't have to.